Council, thank you for coming. At this time, we're going to ask you to please stand. Reverend William will lead us in invocation. Remain standing for our place to the flag. Let us pray, eternal God, full of mystery, yet never far from any one of us. Open our understanding now to your presence and persuasion. Approach us through the transaction of this hour when our most inner instincts grow still and we can hear your still small voice. We live in troubled times and we stand in need of thy present help. Grant us some fresh vision as we take our rightful places in the governance of this great city. We need divine visitation and new strength. Grant us nobler aims and unselfish desires and a united determination to do what is best for all the citizens of Goldsboro. It is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'm going to ask our city clerk to have a roll call for us. Mayor King. Here. Mayor Here. Councilmember Here. Councilmember Here. Here. Councilmember Williams? Here. Councilmember Aycock? Here. We're all here. <coughs> we have some unfinished business that we must complete tonight, and that is swearing in of a uh, council member from uh, Fifth District, Mr. Chuck Alling, and a uh, multi talented city clerk's going to do the honors. <laughs> Well, while he's doing that, I have uh, a resolution for Mr. Bob Waller, who was not here last week. He was out. His son represented him. But Bob's here tonight. And I know he doesn't want to say anything. But his son did a great job last week. But I think Bob needs to just say, I'm leaving, or whatever you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd leave. But, but we, we read this last uh, month. You know what that is, but this is yours. And if you would, just, uh, just a few words. Bob's never been short for words, so I, I know he can do this. Well, stay here with me. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. <laughs> <now. laughs> uh, I, I just appreciate the citizens of Gold for giving me the opportunity to serve on this council. It's been a pleasure. Ten years I've been here, and and we made some progress, I think, and I'm very proud of what we did. And I hope this council will continue doing some good things and working together, being being for all the citizens of Goldsboro. And uh, again, thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. <laughs> guys are sitting here in a position they're not normally accustomed to. You don't want to hear much stuff out of you. <laughs> we won't call 
in trouble, man. <laughs> oh, they're gone already. <laughs> okay. Uh, minutes from our meeting of uh, July 9th. Move to adopt, Mr. Mayor. Have a motion? Second. And a second. Any comments, corrections, or additions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed, say. Minutes are approved. Public comment period. Anyone who would like to take the opportunity to speak to us for up to three minutes, please, you may do so. And if you, please, come forward. And if you would give us your name and mailing address. I know who you are, but we need this for the record. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Dream Weaver. My address is 106 South George Street. I'm here to address an issue that we have at Oak and North James Street. Uh, in January, my nonprofit organization, Grandpa's Children, was donated a property at 310 North James. Since that time, I've advertised it for sale. And <clears throat> I get visitors in from other states, and they go over and they look at the property, and they say, well, it's just a not right neighborhood for me. And to be honest, I, I'm ashamed to take them over there. Um, <clears throat> there are people just everywhere, laudering day, night. Uh, they go over to meet at the soup kitchen at eight o'clock in the morning. They stay till they get food all day. Um, <clears throat> what started out years ago as a good community service has now morphed into a project that enables drug activity and prostitution and everything else to flourish two blocks from here, where city council, you, Mr. Mayor, have invested millions of dollars. Uh, we have a location that could be a prime revitalization just around the corner from here, lovely homes that we can't give away. There was one that's been auctioned and, and, and we can't give them away. Uh, I'm here to ask that it be declared a public nuisance that it is, that meaning the soup kitchen, uh, have it relocated. It's not a good neighborhood for the soup kitchen. The soup kitchen never should have been moved into a neighborhood that needed to be revitalized. Uh, my suggestion is to combine it with the House of Fordham or the Crisis Center on Slocum. Both of those locations have something in place that they could accommodate it and we wouldn't have this laudering afterwards. Um, I know there are other ideas, but my feelings is for someone who really wants to support it, find a place in their neighborhood for it. Uh, James and Oak is not the neighborhood for a soup kitchen. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, please come forward. And again, if you would give us your name and mailing address. James Ferguson, 311 North James. I'm right across the street from the soup kitchen. I'm not actually sure how long ago it was that I purchased the house right across the street. Not directly across the street, but almost uh, from the soup kitchen. Um, it was about six years ago. Uh, one of the first things that I saw when buying the house was someone urinating on the side of the synagogue there. And um, I'm not here to tell you your own history. However, it was very important to me buying the house there that this was actually the second oldest synagogue, Jewish synagogue, in the state of North Carolina. It's a, it's a very incredible structure. Now, <laughs> it is very important to have, uh, to do good deeds uh, to the, for the community with regards to the synagogue, and having the soup kitchen there is very important. However, having uh, people uh, urinating on the side of the building there, and that continues to this day, we, we don't watch every day out there all day long. We don't have video cameras. We've talked uh, about putting those out there, but we've not done it yet. Just by sheer happenstance, we've had 
two pictures in the last two weeks of people urinating <coughs> on the side of the synagogue. Um, one male, one female, strangely enough. Um, the, the, the soup kitchen has a no trespassing order, ordinance um, outside of their hours, outside of 10 to 1, and that there are people sitting out there right now, at least when we walked over here 15 minutes ago, they were sitting out there and they had been sitting there for hours. It's normal that they'll either sit there or sit across the street at Crabtree. Dreamweaver was saying uh, the Crabtree has gone off for auction. Actually, it went up for public auction three, six, three times in three months and could not sell. And it's now being listed for the price of the land. And right now, no one wants to buy Crabtree. That's one of your historical structures in this community that is a beautiful, <coughs> absolutely beautiful sister house to ours, Castix House, and should be restored, yet you can't find anyone wanting to buy it, and part of that has to do with the neighborhood. It's turned into a ghetto. This is obviously is against the, revitaliza the revitalization efforts as discussed in the master plan, it's none of our wishes to turn downtown Goldsboro or the historic neighborhoods into a ghetto. Okay, it's a whole, the neighborhood's a whole lot better than it was six years ago. It ran us away. The neighborhood ran us away. It ran, ran, ran our neighbors away. When a bullet came into their house from a local shooting, they left the neighborhood and never came back. We've come back. We're going to revitalize the, uh, the Castix house. It's important to us. However, we, as it is right now, are willing to put in more money into that house than it's ever going to be worth. However, I don't think you're going to find someone willing to do that with the Castix house. So you will need to make a decision. It's an incredible, wonderful thing to have the soup kitchen across the street. However, soup kitchens around the United States have figured out how not to turn into places of loitering, of trash everywhere, of people urinating on every single vacant building in our entire neighborhood because they drank beer all day, they have nowhere else to go. Mm. That's the problem, and that's the reality of the situation. And having hookers pick up their Johns, or the Johns pick up their hookers, right in front of our house with our little girl living in that home, and my wife being asked, What's that all about? is it's, it's just an unfortunate situation. And you're not going to get families coming back to these neighborhoods with that situation. Gentlemen, I took too much time. Thank you, Inbury. Thank Have you, sir. Mr. Mayor, I, I, I would concur with what both of these gentlemen have said, particularly Dreamweaver. Uh, I've gone out in that area with him. I have to drive by there. It, it is a problem. It really, really is a problem. And I know I've spoken with Chief Stewart. Chief Stewart, I know his guys have made a number of arrests with some of the prostitutes out in that area because it is warmer weather. They're very active. But the loitering is a real, real problem, mm -hmm. and and I think we owe it to our citizens to really try to. We have some work to do, yeah. and we'll we'll sit down and see what we can do to work with it. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yes, sir. I don't know who you are. Don't have an idea, but would you tell us? Sorry, I was going to get up here, but uh, uh, Jimmy Bryan, eighteen oh eight Southern Church Road. Uh, I just like to address the same issue because my businesses are down in that neck of the woods, and and uh, we've had uh, a problem for years. Prostitute for prostitution for for a major problem we've had down where we are because it's a little bit farther down. Mm -hmm. But we do own some property, a warehouse that's one block from the soup kitchen, and of course I go that way a lot, and I do see what the two gentlemen are talking mm -hmm. about. It's you can go there now and see it, and I bet I picked up. Uh, 
uh, tried to trailer load of beer bottles on my, our property down from that that people just throw out there or leaving, going and coming. That, that area too is, is very, very close to, to town. Really, I mean, I know we got to, we talk about the fringes of Goldsboro and addressing that issue, we've got to work on that, but that is extremely close to our town. We have a lot of people get lost and come down 70 trying to find their way to, to, to uh, Moorhead that come in there, you know they're lost by just turning and going, mm -hmm. but, and they see all this stuff. We have salesmen come to our office and there's, there's two or three prostitutes out there on the corner. You know, and it, it is a problem. It is a major problem. And, um, um, and we've got, I think, two nice buildings down that way and we took that property and sort of invested our money some years ago uh, and probably hoping it would get a little bit better than what it has, you know. But we, I know it being on your side of this uh, mm -hmm. fence up here, it's not an easy thing. I, I know it's not. But I just wanted to reinforce what they've said. We do have a problem down there. We really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will. I'm sorry. Just, I do have one comment. Um, Mr. Stevens, at the corner, Jimmy, help me. There's, where the building burned down at the corner of. Uh, James and is it Vine? Is that yeah. we got a building that burned down a couple of it. Uh, yeah, but, but it's just nobody's ever cleaned yeah. it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's still there. I mean, it's just bunched up in a pile. Yeah, so it. somebody needs to make it's somebody's. Still I still noticed there. that the other day. Somebody needs to get that cleaned up. Is it, that, you know, that's not helping the neighborhood either. I think what we'll do is ask city manager. We'll sit down and talk, and maybe invite the speakers here so that we can have a dialogue as to what's going on and come up with a policy to deal with. It. Maybe we, we might, might not be able to completely clean it up, but we can do something. We can make it better than it is. Anybody else? Yes. And would you please give us your name and Neil name address? Bob Jackson, 109 Aurora Lane, Goldsboro. <clears throat> I've got my tax notice here from before the reevaluation and after, and my taxes went up 19.6%. I think if you look at the nationwide uh, property values, I am told that they have gone down 33% across the country. I believe that this same property in the last 10 years has gone up around 50% with the uh, reevaluation in 01 or 02. Uh, that to me would seem to be exorbitant. Um, uh, I don't know the people who did the most recent appraisals. Um, and I don't know why our, our properties would uh, go up the way they have. Mm -hmm. Now, had we taken that reappraisal value and put a rate of 15 and a quarter cents per hundred, that would have been re revenue neutral. We chose to leave the rate where it was at, at 65 cents a hundred. And in my case, that is just under 20% increase. Um, Personally, I would like to uh, uh, know why we needed that much additional money. I believe if you look at the numbers that I've been able to get so far, if you take an average citywide, you would find something around 13% increase as an average, mm -hmm. even though mine went up at 19.6%. Um, I know that we're doing this thing called Streetscape. Uh, and a museum, um, and doing some work on the park. Uh, I come down North William Street nearly every day, and at uh, Royal Avenue and William Street, I, I sometimes wonder if I'm not gonna lose my transmission. Uh, there is so many potholes on William Street that need to be fixed. Uh, I don't know what that cost would be, but it was seemed uh, to be something that we could handle um, with the funds available. Uh, you see cars going in and out trying to dodge the, the holes in the road. 
and it's bad. Um, I would encourage the board to look at your priorities, maybe again, and to see if there's not some way. And I understand that all projects, being a contractor, have overruns, generally. Uh, very seldom do you see any project that has underruns. I've never seen it happen. But I suspect most projects have overruns. And I don't know what the final bill on streetscape is going to be. I don't know that you know. But it's going to be somewhat more than what was proposed earlier. Um, I, I know that we've got to have priorities, and we need to have priorities. And we sometimes um, do the best we can with uh, what information we have at the moment. But as times change and needs change, then maybe we need to relook priorities. And I would recommend that you do that. Thank you very much. Sir, uh, we are familiar with priorities and we use them all the time and for evalu evaluations, that's not a city function. The county is the agency that- The road you mean? Or what? All evalu evalu evaluation is done by the county. We do not. Yeah, but you set the rate. And you could have lowered the oh, rate. The water, the rates, yes. Uh, the, the property rates. I'm talking about real, real estate. And yes. if, you'd, if, you'd, yes. if you'd have lowered it to 15 and a quarter, you would have been yes. actually revenue neutral. Okay. But oh, we chose yes. to keep it at 65, which in my case was a 20% increase. Uh, about property, rates. property rates and yeah. That's correct. Yes. So overall, your property tax monies went up, I believe, citywide, but 13%. Yeah. So I mean, what are we going to use that money for? And I, th I think the taxpayers of the city would like to know that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Seeing none, we will move to our presentations. And we have uh, Pamela Atkins. Is Pamela here? Yes, there she is. 3M Methodist Men's Ministry Center. I had the pleasure of visiting with Pam a few weeks ago, and she has a hidden uh, treasure out right there that she's going to talk to us we about. Do. And thank you. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet when you came out, and thank you guys for having me, and hopefully I'll be a little breath of fresh air instead of downer items. <laughs> we um, Should I just push these slides as just the arrow to get to the next yeah. slide? Jimmy. Um, on the screen there is a picture of the center. Just press that one. Thank you. Um, it is called the Methodist Men's Ministry Center. The, I don't know how many of you, you were familiar with the Mercy Center in Rosewood area, but that this was the Mercy Center, and now the property has been deeded over to the United Methodist Men. So we are excited. Um, we have so much potential out there, and it's just not being used to its full potential. So. Mayor King was kind enough to let me come here and just tell you guys a little bit more about it. And I won't take up a lot of time, but we have 55,000 square foot of warehouse. And a lot of that is not being used right now. So there's storage space for people. There's, um, I'll show you a picture in a moment, uh, a side warehouse that we have that's empty. That would be a great youth facility or a lot. There's all kinds of things. Or people could rent that area, that storage unit out, whatnot. But and although we wave the Methodist flag and we are part of the Methodist church, um, we are open to not just all organizations or churches, but organizations as well. So we would like for, um, for anybody in the city to use this facility. And we have conference space available as well. This is our conference room. We have audio, video, equipment, the screen. So 3,600 square feet. We can fit about 125 people at round tables there or probably up to 200 or 250 theater style. So. Again, I don't know if there are organizations in the city that look for a meeting space, but we do have this available. And we also have the kitchen area, so if you need to prepare a meal or bring food in, keep it warm or whatnot as you serve people, whether it's a couple hour event or a weekend event, week long, we serve, I mean, we have those facilities. This is the warehouse that I was mentioning that right now is empty. 
and it's about 10,000 square feet. So it's, it's available for, and we'd love to see it being used for something either for the city or the county or even organization something. This is a ropes course that we have out there. So if organizations want to, I know a lot of companies do team building activities and it could use a little sprucing up. So <laughs> um, there's a lot of things that need to be updated out there too. And I know you saw some of that when you were out there. And that's part of my being here too, is we have, I am the only paid staff there. I moved here from Florida in January <coughs> to take this position. So I'm new to the community as well. So. I don't know really who to turn to to ask for help in different areas, so would appreciate your help in that area as well. So we could, um, all the volunteers we could get, we can, we would love. This is um, out in the back area. We have three trailers for housing. We used to have a program there called Footprints where youth came for a week in the summer and almost every, from different areas, so almost every week was full. And then that program, when Mercy shut down, that program was moved um, to a camp in Fayetteville, Camp Rockfish. And now we had one youth group this past summer, and it was a great experience. We helped at the Boys and Girls Club. We did a lot of community projects, and um, they stayed out here. We can house up to, there's 16 per trailer, so about 48 youth at a time. And we can house adults in there, too, if you don't mind being on bunk beds and whatnot. <laughs> this is the warehouse area, and that is used primarily for disaster relief. And that, again, in and of itself is another job that... If we were hit with a storm, we would want to know that we have plenty of volunteers that can jump on it and get that, get the repairs needed and the assessments needed right away. So we have all kinds of facilities for that. And these are just some other projects and events that we're doing. We're putting in a recording studio out there. So we could use all kinds of help with musical equipment and construction, things like that. And then we want to, we, we just want the community to be aware of that because if there's or people, individuals or Churches, praise bands, anybody who wants to come and record a CD or a DVD, they can do that. In the top right-hand corner, these are little caskets for infants that we make and give to the hospitals. And this, again, is a, it's a great manly project for guys who want to come and build with their hands things to do. The little pet, it's a personal energy transportation um, thing down there at the bottom left. And that is for third world countries for amputees because normal wheelchairs can't get around on the terrain over there. So those are all-terrain wheels and um, they power it with their arms, so it gives them a little exercise at the same time. And then we have conferences. Um, the No Man Left Behind conference is through an organization called Man in the Mirror out of Florida, where I used to work. But um, we are focusing on discipling men out there, and we really want to see men stepping up and being leaders in their homes, in their communities, churches, at work. And that's, we um, are in no way shunning women or youth. In fact, the reason we focus on men is because we know that the benefactors of getting the men right will be the women and youth. So we really want to serve the community as well. So I think that we also have 11 acres. I didn't have a picture. I had a little board over there, but I didn't want to draw it up here. But we have 11 acres of undeveloped property out behind the warehouse that we would love to do trails or whatever we could do out there to make that more appealing to the city as well. So any questions or it was a kind of a really quick, but I would invite you guys yeah. anytime you want to come out as well as I would have. encourage anyone, everyone, to, to go uh, out and see the facility. contact her and go out there and see uh, the resources that, that, I would love that it. are there mm -hmm. and the capability of what's there. Mm -hmm. Very enlightening. Thank you. I have some brochures I can read with you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have another pres presentation. Jerry Jones, God Belongs in My City. This young man, I've, I've been in his presence a few times when he delivered a message, a sermon, or what, but he's very, very impressive. Thank you, sir. You bet. Um, I want to share with you an opportunity that uh, we have been preparing and planning for in our city, and the event is called God Belongs in My City. Um, Many of you, if not all of you, should have received the package by now, probably within the last week or two, uh, with all of the itinerary and the plans for this event. God Belongs in My City is a national movement that started uh, maybe around 2009, and uh, started in the city of New York, and it's gone all across the country, even uh, to Australia, to Africa. Uh, it's really going hard right now as we speak in Florida. Uh, 
Fayetteville, uh, they hosted a God Belongs in My City event in April and they actually set the record for the largest attendance uh, nationally known with 6,000 plus uh, participants. What God Belongs in My City is a, a, a community and unity gathering as well as a prayer walk that pulls the community, particularly the churches together, uh, to uh, come together and to pray for our city and just to show camaraderie and unity. Uh, this is something that's been on my heart as I saw it over a year ago and I was simply waiting for the right time. And uh, of course, having seen many of the unfortunate um, uh, accidents and, and, and acts of violence in our uh, city, as many people, we all want to do something. And I saw this as an opportunity for me and a team uh, to come together and to do something positive for our city. Uh, to this point, we have uh, met strategically behind the scenes with a number of churches. Uh, it's open to all churches, all businesses, all of the community, but we're kind of targeting and pulling this team together through uh, many of our community churches. I don't want to throw any rash numbers to you. I would rather surprise you uh, than to disappoint you, but I will tell you as of right now, if the weather does not hold pretty ladies uh, home because of rain in their hair, we will at this moment minimally have 3,000 participants. And I am expecting that number to possibly double. Uh, we're in some early stages of our planning. Uh, what we've done is we've targeted uh, many of the pastors. Matter of fact, on this Friday at 12 p.m., we're going to be shooting a promotional commercial. Uh, we have commercials going right now on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, we have a website, GodBelongsInMyCity.com backslash Goldsboro with our commercial. Had I known the capability, I would have showed it to you, but you will enjoy the entertainment when you get home. We'll have a commercial that's being shot this coming Friday at noon with all of the local pastors that are willing to come out and to be a part of this. And one of the beautiful things I saw in this concept is I've never seen a community event in our area to pull all of the pastors together. Um, so often, you know, we admire our pastor, their pastor, your pastor, but we rarely see anything where they're all together. This event will bring the community and the church together where it's not about a church, but it's about the church. And certainly we will not, um, you know, turn anybody away because of, of various religious beliefs, whatever the case may be. We are about unity and not turning people away. We will certainly respect other people uh, and anyone that decides to be a part. So we're excited about it. We're working with uh, many other youth ministries. Uh, a lot of these young people are excited about going out in the community and sharing information, flyers, posters. Uh, working with pastors, working with businesses. We are anticipating a number of businesses to sponsor this endeavor as we are anticipating that after the walk, which will be a two-mile walk beginning at Goldsboro High School, September 22nd, 4 p.m., beginning at Goldsboro High School, we'll meet there. We'll take a walk down Beach Street to Audubon. Uh, we'll make a right on Audubon. From there, we'll make a right on uh, Walnut Street. We'll make another right on Herman, that's as long as the police department doesn't change our plan. And the route that we have prepared to this moment is technically prepared for about 1,000. And they told me if we go heavy over that, we're gonna have to find an alternative route. Of course, I didn't wanna hurt anybody's feelings, so we prepared in the meantime, but we're probably gonna have to have a come to Jesus meeting with them to fix all of this mess that the community is making. But this is certainly going to be a good mess. Um, I am encouraging respectfully that any business or, or, or anyone that is planning anything September 22nd outside of God Belongs in My City, if you're looking for a crowd, you may want to cancel it and change it because God Belongs in My City is certainly going to impact this city and it's going to be the likes of something we have never seen. After the prayer walk, which is a two-mile prayer walk, we will return back to Goldsboro High School. It is our anticipation to have local restaurants to uh, sponsor and to uh, donate uh, foods that we might uh, uh, give an entree to each participant. Uh, after that, we will assemble on the football field of Goldsboro High School. We'll have a stage set up with a, a professional audio system and we will have a rally concert which will go into the night hours. Uh, most of the time when we see things at night, it's always trouble. 
but there's going to be an awesome thing going on there on that football field with those lights on, and uh, there won't be any trouble, any trouble at all. So we're excited about that. Uh, we have so many local artists and so many local businesses, uh, churches who are excited about this, and we just want to take an opportunity to share it with you. I certainly have some flyers, some posters. If you have not seen any, I'll certainly leave some for you. Uh, information is at the bottom of all of those, so if there's any information or questions you may have, you can certainly call or email. Uh, some of you have Facebooks, I follow. Uh, so uh, um, certainly can any of that, we'll certainly love to uh, entertain and answer any of your questions, comments, and or concerns. But uh, we are certainly believing that this is something uh, to help and to aid with uh, many of the positive things that you're already doing and we're excited to be a part. Most important thing is for the community to understand that with everything we have going on, that none of us within ourselves can technically be the answer, but we all have a responsibility to be a part of the solution. So this is an opportunity for myself, uh, many of those young people that are working along the side of us, as well as uh, companies, businesses, uh, churches, uh, to do our part and to have at least one day uh, where the community can come together and be excited about being a part of the beautiful city of Goldsboro. So without any questions, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Lots you. of love. Thank you. Public hearings. Mayor, I'll turn it over to Jimmy Rowe to carry us through our public hearings. Megan City Councilman, the first item, item E. ZU 1212, Theron and The property is located on the northwest corner of North William Street and Hooks River Road. The subject property is shown here in the crosshatched area. This is the property boundaries that are shown here. This is William Street that runs here. This is Hooks River Road. Um, this is the structure that sits on the property. This area in the crosshatch used to be used as a laundromat. That's where the proposed internet cafe would be located at. The applicant requests a conditional use permit to allow the operation of the internet cafe, electronic gaming operation. The zoning of the property is currently general business. Internet cafe suites, like facilities or electric gaming facilities are permitted within the general business zone and district as a condition of use. No establishment shall be located within 200 feet of any residential zone on developed property, church, or school. No such establishment shall be located within 200 feet of any other such establishment. The subject property line is immediately adjacent to residential zone and developed property to the west. The modification of the separation requirement will be necessary from 200 feet to zero feet. There is no church or school facility or another such internet cafe use located within 200 feet of the proposed operation. The hours of operation will be from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Well, those are the operations that the council has set forth. The hours of operation for this establishment will be from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Sunday. The proposed floor plan shows a total of eight computers and eight gaming machines are proposed along with an office area and restroom. 34 parking spaces would be required based on two spaces for a computer game and one space for an employee. 12 parking spaces are required for the existing convenience store and vacant restaurant. Um, three units require a total of 46 parking spaces for the entire site. Um, only 18 parking spaces exist on the site. A modification of the parking requirement from four to six spaces to 18 spaces will be required. Mm -hmm. Two employees will be associated with the operation. Um, as set forth by the council, a $2,500 privilege tax per establishment plus a $500 privilege tax for each computer is required for all or any part of the fiscal year, running from July 1st to June 30th. 
There is currently no landscaping existing on the site or shown on the submitted site plan and modification of city landscape requirements will be required. The following modifications have been requested by the applicant. Modification of the 200 foot distance requirement from residential property from 200 feet to zero feet. Modification of the limit required parking spaces from 46 spaces to 18 spaces. And modification of all landscaping and buffering requirements. The recommendation is there is no action of the council necessary at this time. The Planning Commission will have a recommendation for the council's meeting on September 4th, 2012. Here's some photographs of the, of the site. Thank you. Any questions from the council of Mr. Rowe? So, Jimmy, what you're saying is that um, they're required to have at least 46 parking spaces. Yes, sir. And they can't come anywhere close to it because it only have 18. Right, they can't meet that requirement. Initially, um, when we first spoke to them, there's a laundromat, um, there's a laundromat that's shown here. Um, before we um, did the report, they had indicated they would bring a, a lease agreement from the laundromat indicating that they could use that for parking, but we never received that. So therefore, they need that modification. Okay. Any more questions? Thanks, Jimmy. This is a, this is a public hearing it was just described. Anyone who would like to speak for or against, we'd be glad to listen. This is a conditional use, so if you'd like to speak, we'll have to swear you in, but our city clerk can do that. James Blunt, uh, representing uh, this petition, condition of use request CU 1212 to the mayor and city council. I have the petition here uh, <coughs> opposing against that site because we have had numerous uh, problems on that north end for years and years. Uh, the mothers, it was out there. They got a permit and they won't supposed to have alcohol and stuff. But the ABC board do what they say that they're not gonna do. See, and uh, I served on many boards up in the city council, the planning board and the parents commission and all, all of those boards. And we're opposing against this permit because they say that they're not gonna do one thing and then the ABC board will come in and issue license that, uh, other words, they don't believe that y'all have no control over and I know that we don't because we've been to Raleigh and different places trying to fight these different uh, permits and petitions for the ABC board and they gonna do what they want to do anyhow so we opposing you know, this club and I believe against your ordinance it said that the ordinance prohibit the operation of any club or cafe within 200 feet of a resident a church, a school, or whatever, and there's a residence right there at that building, and there's a church down the street a little ways from that building, and I believe if you're going to go by your ordinance, then you'll be breaking your ordinance if you pass for that clue. And I give you this. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? My 
name is uh, John Whitfield, and we own the property adjacent to the store. And uh, me and my wife, we lived there for right at up to 18 to 20 years. And uh, I think we moved out about three years ago. And like the whole while that we owned the property, there was dumpsters, the fence fell down, and the people that owned the property, they, they never fixed the fence or anything. We went to the, the city maintenance building, I think it was about at least two or three times and complained about that. And I think they found them one time about the fence and stuff, but, but the dumpsters, they're right there at the front porch of the house. And like they cook in the store and like when they cook, they throw the grease and the chicken parts in the dumpster and they magnets and all that, you know, with a foul smell in the dumpster. And like the ordinance said, like it should be, there shouldn't be anything within 200 feet of a residence. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? I don't see any signs, so we'll close this public hearing and we'll move to our next. Item F, Z812, West of Bathfoot. Um, the property is located on the northwest corner of South Berkeley Boulevard and East Elm Street. The property is located on the property is located on the northeast corner of East Elm Berkeley Boulevard and East Elm Street. The property has a frontage of 187.06 feet on South Berkeley Boulevard, a frontage of 163.81 feet on East Elm Street, and a total area of 23,950 square feet or 0.55 acres. The present zone classification is general business condition district use for use call lot. The proposed zone classification <coughs> is general business condition district for an internet cafe gaming computer operation. The subject property is shown here in the cross section area. This is Berkeley Boulevard is shown here. This is East Ann Street. The property is shown here in the red color is general business. The property here is shopping center. Neighborhood business. This is neighborhood business condition district. Residential R12 here, here. Property here is residential R9. The comprehensive land use plan shows a portion of the property designated for major retail development and a portion of the pro property for existing residential development. And the property is shown here in the green color for agriculture. These are photographs of the, of the property. The subject property is approximately 87 feet from residential development property. A modification of the 200 foot separation requirement will be necessary from 200 feet to 87 feet. Um, there is no church or school facility located within 200 feet of the proposed um, use. The hours of operation for such uses shall be limited to 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. The hours of operation for this particular site would be from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m. Monday through Sunday. A total of 30 computers are proposed along with an office area and restrooms. A total of 65 parking spaces will be required based on two spaces per computer and one space per employee. There are only 38 parking spaces on the site. Therefore, a modification of the parking requirement of 65 spaces, 38 spaces will be required. They are proposing five employees. The applicant has requested the following modifications. Uh, modification of the required distance from residential development from 200 feet to 87 feet. Modification of sidewalk requirement due to the location of the existing traffic control panel and guide wires from the area adjacent to Berkeley Boulevard and Am Street. Modification to wave interior landscaping and provision of all vehicle surface areas to be located within 60 feet of a parking lot tree. And modification of the number of required parking spaces from 65 spaces to 38 spaces. Um, the there's no action necessary the planning commission we have a recommendation for the council meeting on september 4th 2012. um while i was sitting at my seat the applicant um, he came over and talked to me and he asked me to let the council know that based on the proposal for the base that the hours of operation be limited to nine that he is requesting that this be Denied. 
and I have a witness <laughs> that he did ask me that. He wanted the council to deny that instead of going forward with the request since the hours of operation based on what the base has submitted. Mm -hmm. The base has indicated that they have no problem with the request, but they would want the hours of operation to be limited to 9 o'clock. So therefore, he's requesting that request be denied. And since the, since the request has been um, put in the paper and advertised that we just can't withdraw it, it has to be denied. Yeah. Well. Well, Shrek, what, 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 I think it makes it pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd recommend you go ahead with the public hearing and, and uh, deny it at the next meeting. Uh, let, let the planning commission come right. back. Yeah. I wouldn't take any shortcuts. Right. Okay. All right. We will follow the advice of our attorney and we will go ahead with the public hearing. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this issue? <coughs> no one. So we will close this uh, hearing and we will make a decision in our next meeting as we normally would and that being said the planning commission i think uh, this time you may choose to leave if you'd like to or you can sit here with us <laughs> i think they're going to leave i don't remember you guys being jimmy you're on you're not on the planning <laughs> Okay. Ready, Mr. Mayor? Yep, we're ready. Okay. <laughs> Item G, non-contiguous annexation request, S. Dillon Wooten, Junior Property. The property is located on the southeast corner of Buck Swamp Road and Huntington Drive. The Acres of the property, 0.733 acres. This is the map of the property here. This is the city limit line that's shown here in the purple. This is the an area photo of the property. And this is the property here in the cross section area. This is Buck Swamp Road that's shown here. The city council at that meeting on July 23rd, 2012, scheduled a public hearing for the proposed analyzation of the set of the property. The public hearing notice was advertised stating the time, place, and purpose of the meeting. Pursuant to GS 160A 58.2, at the public hearing, all persons on the property in the area proposed to be annexed, as well as residents of the municipality, shall be given an opportunity to be heard on the proposed annexation. If the City Council determines that proposed annexation meets all the requirements of GS 160A 58, it has the authority to adopt an annexation ordinance. The requirements of governing the non conducive annexation are as follows. The area is located within one mile of the established city limits line. The city's ability to contract for the provision of fire and police protection. In no instance shall a non contiguous annexation have an adverse effect upon the city's overall annexation plans. If an area is situated beyond one mile of the city limits, the city may consider annexation of the area so long as public water. Um, supply is available or can be reasonably made available and the track in question is 20 acres or more. If the track in question is less than 20 acres but it's contiguous to another satellite annexation, the city will consider the smaller track eligible for satellite annexation. Attached is a report prepared by the Department of Planning and Community Development in conjunction with other departments concerning the subject annexation area. The location of the property is on the southeast corner of Buck Swamp Road and Huntington Drive. The site is currently occupied by a convenience store and gas station. There's no resident population. The acreage is 0.733 acres. The zoning, the property was part of the phase allowing annexation area, which was de annexed through passage of House Bill 5 by state legislation effective July 1st, 2012. The property which has been zoned general business by the city is now outside the city's <coughs> zoning jurisdiction and is not zoned by the city council. The nearest point of the proposed satellite corporate limits must be no more than three miles from the primary corporate limits of the annexing city. The nearest point of the proposed satellite 
corporate limits from the primary corporate limits of the city of Goldsboro is approximately 4,700 feet or 0.89 acres. There's no primary corporate limits of another city within 4,700 feet of proposed satellite corporate limits. All areas of, of the petition annexation area will be included in the ordinance of the council's house to annex this property. Fire protection. The city can provide fire protection to the subject property. According to the fire chief, the average cost of one fire call to a property is $2,283, which is much greater than the anticipated revenues of $1,774.63. Even if the city contracts fire service to an annex area with the Belfast Volunteer Fire Department, the Department of Insurance will require that the city respond to in order to retain their IOS rating. Police protection is proposed by the police. It is proposed that police protection will be provided through an amendment to its agreement with the Wayne County Sheriff Department. Um, at the briefing, Chief Stewart gave me a copy of that agreement, which had been signed by the Sheriff Department. Refuge collection. The city's public director has recommended that the property owner obtain private refuge collection services. Street construction and maintenance. No public street is included within the petition for annexation. Water sewer. The property is served by water through Fork Township Sanitary District. City sanitary sewer is not available to this property. The existing development, this convenience store and gas station that occupies the property. The estimated land value is $273,020. The estimated revenue is $1,774.63. The estimate of portion of share payment for this annexation is one to six thousand eighty four cents for eleven years, or the cost of contracting for fire with the Belfast Volunteer Fire Department. This contract would be one hundred seven seven dollars forty six cents per year. Um, if annexed, um, the council has the choice of putting this in District One, or they can construct inst instruct the staff to add it to another district. The recommendation is. By motion, I will come over here and take action on the petition for annexation for the Dillon Woodland property effective August 31st, 2012. If recommended for approval, adopt an annexation order subject to the following. Property owners signing waivers of sanitary sewer and reference collection services. And two, amendment of the agreement with the Wayne County Sheriff Department for provisions of police service to the property. Any questions from council on this rule? Hearing none. This is a public hearing, as Mr. Rowe just described. Anyone who would like to vote or to speak for or against, <laughs> we'd be glad to hear from you. Anyone like to speak? Yes, sir. Would you give us your name and mail address? Sure. I'm John Williams, 103 Trappers Run Drive. Said property that I looked at uh, voluntary annexation. I can sit on my front porch and see the store. Been there for 16 years. If we drop back nine to 10 years ago, the same voluntary annexation was put forth and defeated because we said, wait a second, time out. This is our neighborhood. This is one little plot. And the whole reason behind it is to sell alcohol. It's the only the entire reason. The entire reason we're here today is because of the sale of alcohol. I found this out because on 1 July when we were de-annexed, called the ABC board and there's already been a 90 day extension given to that store to continue to sell alcohol until this process that we're set forth here today comes about. Now, I've got a few problems with what's going on here. Number one, this is our neighborhood, not yours, not the city of Goldsboro anymore. It's our neighborhood. The sale of alcohol with a number of children in that area, underage children I might add, ones that can't get in the car, 12, 13, 14, I know they've been down there. Nothing against the store. I'm sure they're carded to 100% that anyone's 21 or older to get the beer, alcohol, whatever they're buying. But I guarantee you there's other people out there paying a little bit more money and they're getting what they want and don't have a car. I also know the drugs have been dealt there. I myself went down there for almost three weeks every night to have a soda pop and sit out back with several young men who were trying to sell drugs on a regular basis and I sat there and finally they just decided to leave. 
because I was going to be there longer than they were going to be able to sell their drugs. So, and this was coordinated with the local police here, of course, with Goldsboro, because that's who we run at the time. Never once did I see a policeman from Goldsboro out there. <clears throat> the other thing is we're sitting right next to a Christian child care center, right next door, very next, next door to it. Right behind them is 300 and some odd houses, like I said, with a number of children. And we'd like to have control over what we do out there. If you don't annex, which I'm sure under the laws, under the rules, you may be allowed to, just like we were before. But again, just because you're allowed to doesn't make it right. And the other thing is, this is our neighborhood. And we like to keep it safe. I can take you around here. I work downtown. I can take you almost every corner down here. Most all of the stores that sell beer or alcohol in this, this they aren't next to a child care center, aren't in a real populated neighborhood like this. The ones that are, we can, I can tell you right now, we can get down, we can see prostitution, drug trade, everything under the sun here in this city. I know it, you know it. I've been here too long now and I've seen it every day. Now I just assume we don't want that out there. We do not want those kind of problems out there. We just assume let the alcohol go ahead back where it used to be. Anybody that wants alcohol can go three miles either direction and get it. Either at the store right off of 117 or they can go right out the other way to uh, Walmart. I would just, just as soon have that out of there. A good many of my neighbors feel the same way, and that's why I'm here to speak to you, and I really appreciate considering not annexing that place just because we don't want to have alcohol there, and we really want to be able to say what we do in our neighborhood. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Yes, sir. Again, give us your name and mail address. My name's John Williams. Uh, I live at 115 Hudson Drive in Princeton. I'm the district manager <clears throat> over the Kangaroo Express stores, which this location is one of my stores. My office is in that store. Uh, <clears throat> the problems that he brought to you guys' attention, uh, I don't see those problems out there. We close at 12 o'clock every night. Uh, we're not open 24 hours. We were allowed to have a beer license in 2008 when it was annexed. We <clears throat> invested quite a bit of money to be able to do that. And <clears throat> we're very cognizant about uh, checking IDs. We don't have any problems out there. And we would just like to retain our annexation in the city so we could continue to sell beer. Uh, like we have since 2008 and by not being able to do that would be in today's economy would be pretty detrimental to our sales for our company so, thank you thank you sir is there anyone else who would like to speak on this issue anyone yes, yes sir I'm Bob Brandy I live at uh, on the traffic run drives as well. And, you know, I don't remember us getting a say and this man getting a permit when we came into the city. What we're trying, you know, before we, we didn't have it and we, it, we liked it that way. And what we're trying is, he doesn't live in our neighborhood. We do. We've got our neighborhood. We want to keep it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? Don't see any signs. Uh, we will close the public hearing and we do have a recommendation. Anybody? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion. We approve the non contiguous annexation request of the STL and Wooten property. We have a motion to approve the annexation request. Is there a second? I'll second. And there's a second. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed same? No. no. Let's have a show of hands. All in favor? Three. Opposed? Three, four. Motion is feed.
Okay. Moving to the consent agenda. Mayor and Council, we had on the consent agenda items H through O. Uh, as we discussed in the work session, again, items H through O. We have the consent agenda that's proposed for approval. Move for adoption. Second. Have a motion and a second. And we will have a roll call vote, please. Mayor Payne? Yes. Mayor Parton Yes, ma'am. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. 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 Consent agenda is approved. Items requiring individual action. I guess we have none. Yeah, we don't have any items this evening. City manager report. <coughs> um, Mayor and Council, I have two items that I would like to share with you this evening. First, I would like to begin by providing some comments in response to concerns you heard from citizens in late June about violence in our community. Our police department is implementing some changes which Chief Stewart will share with you in a few moments. And additionally, we would like to share some of the ideas that were generated during the community meeting held July 24th and from other meetings with concerned citizens. Chief Stewart will comment on the law enforcement related items or comments and then I would like to share with you some of the non-law enforcement related items or comments. And at this time I would ask Chief Stewart to come forward and again, to speak on the law enforcement related comments and some changes that he is proposing to implement within the police department. Chief. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mayor Council, it's an honor to be here tonight. And the first thing I'd like to do is apologize for my absence during the community me uh, meeting that you, that was held. Their concerns from the community uh, was more foot patrols from the officers, developing relationships with the patrol officers, uh, police not being present at the right time, I guess when some of these violations that we heard tonight, I guess the police cars are not right in that area and when they're taking place. Uh, loitering. Seem to have a lot of loitering complaints. Uh, uh, preventative e uh, measures to solve these. Starting September 1st, the Goldsboro Patrol Division is going to take on a more community policing role. The zones, we have six zones within the city of Goldsboro. All right. There's at least one officer in each one of these zones. What I propose to do is to quadrant off each zone. We have four shifts. Make four officers that work 24 hours a day, seven days a week in those zones. We're going to keep them there for a period of six months so they can get to know the residents. Each one of those officers will be assigned one of those quadrants in that zone to get to know the, the people in that community and address their concerns. They'll be looking for things like streets, street lights out, anything that that the, the residents have a concern with that they'll address. Uh, August 30th, uh, myself and Major Chair of the Goldsboro Police Department will be going to High Point, North Carolina to look at the High Point model of how they are able to reduce violent crimes. I'll actually be uh, meeting with their Chief of Police and see if we can imp uh, implement some of those ideas in Goldsboro as well. Other suggestions that were br uh, brought out uh, were curfews. The problem with curfews, we're looking at, at, at the possibility of doing it, but right now it's the manpower. If I had two or three uh, juveniles that my officers are out with, and we had a curfew on the books right now, if we couldn't get up with the guardian or parents, what am I going to do with that juvenile? I'm going to have to have these officers remove them from the streets and stay at the police department with them. I'm looking into options of how I can deal with that problem. Substations. I've heard a lot of people talk about substations. Some of you remember we had those in the community and the housing developments and actually on North William Street. All right, the problem that we were getting, they were generating a lot of complaints as well because we couldn't keep them staffed. We're looking at a mobile command uh, station that we can move to these areas and we can operate out of there. Uh, the gun buyback program. I've actually I'm talking to other agencies and see how they handled that. How about their policies were? There's a lot of legal things that we need to consider when we talk about gun buybacks. You know, but we're going to have to store these guns initially. We're going to have to run these guns to see if they were stolen initially. Um, we're going to have to do IBIS checks on them. Then we're going to have to run to the city attorney's office so they can actually get an order to destroy them. So we're actually looking at all these avenues uh, to address these citizens' concerns. Do you have any questions? Uh, 
Thanks a lot, Chief and, and Scott. I sat in the meeting. It was a good meeting, and they brought up some interesting points, and we told them we'd get back and give them some response, and this is a part of that. I look, I look forward to September. I think there's going to be some good things happening. Uh, it seems that the citizens want these officers out of the car. Thank you know, you. technology keeps us in the car. 15, 20 years ago, you know, if you saw somebody that, you know, you want to check out, you had to get out. Now you've got that NDT right next to you. Yeah. Uh, and perception as well. You know, these officers may be going to a call when they're going by some of these uh, situations that the citizens brought up. I just want to be fair to our officers. They, they work real hard, and they're out there trying to serve the people of Goldsboro. Uh, yeah, Chief, uh, that mobile command station seems to be ideal because usually when you, you go in and uh, you patrol an area, you just simply move to another one. That's exactly correct, sir. We'll move in one part of town, we'll stay there a day or two, and then they'll be somewhere else. You know, like some of the things that were brought up tonight, uh, we'll saturate that area for a day or two, and then the next day, you know, they return. Uh, we, need, we need the citizens to call us. Uh, can't have a police officer in every corner uh, in the city of Goldsboro. Uh, I know I was actually out there, and I think I ran into Mr. Heaton. I was actually out there checking our residential areas. You know, I'm out there. And some of these complaints I see, and they're valid, but some of them, you know, when I'm there, I just don't see it. Uh, have you had any um, <clears throat> requests from any of these different areas for um, maybe setting up a crime, neighborhood crime watch? Again, once we get these officers out there talking to them, that's initially what they'll be doing, so, you know, trying to set up uh, community watches. Uh, there's all kinds of things I, I foresee for this program. Yeah, but that's absolutely one of the things that we want to do. We want to get, we want the citizens helping us to make this a safer community. Another thing we're going to be doing uh, as well is I've received permission from the school board to actually have our officers start going into the elementary schools, walking through, uh, just doing courtesy inspections. You know, get these kids at a young age knowing that the police are here to help. We want these ki kids running to us, not from us. You know, and I plan on going to all these uh, schools, middle schools, and actually eating lunch with the students. Let them know who we are. And if you're not too busy, I may give you a call and see if you want to go with us. But it's time that the, these kids at a young age get to know what we do for the community and who we are. That's good. Good idea. Very good, Chief. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Appreciate it. Mayor and Council, a few other things on the non-law enforcement side. We heard in a number of these meetings, maybe longer evening hours for the library. We will share that um, uh, so kids have a safe place and also Internet access and uh, issues there. We've heard some issues with our 911 call center that maybe not as friendly or trying to ask too many questions rather than just taking the information. We heard concerns with the school system which included maybe putting kids with problems out of schools which leads to unsupervised kids which leads to more problems and is there another way to do that. Uh, curriculum maybe not diverse enough for all children specifically as it relates to trades and maybe the wrong kids sent to the alternative school instead of being helped at their assigned school. And again, these concerns we will share with the county for the 911 center and the library and then with the school system as well this week. So they'll hear those from us. Uh, some of the community members felt that we need more, and these really are for the city to address or talk more about, activities for kids, specifically ages 8 to 15, to get them in ac good activities early on um, so that by the time they grow into young teenagers they have a good foundation. Uh, there are a lot of organizations in our community working to provide these activities and services. The city happens to be one of those organizations that has that same desire. And we'll share this need with other youth-related organizations within the community. And finally, we heard about the need for community centers, specifically one to replace W.A. Foster, which we have talked about in the very near future. We are actively searching, as you know, for a location uh, in and around the area of W.A. Foster. We are looking for approximately three acres, and we are, we're looking to, so that kids can be in that neighborhood um, and looking for someone willing to sell at market price. We're not trying to take it, but we also want to make sure it's a fair price to the city as well. We do have money budgeted in our current year to be begin the design of this facility with the hope of beginning construction possibly within the next six to 12 months. So I think there is action on some of those items. We're preparing a written report of all the comments that we've heard uh, that we can share publicly and then we would update and share in the weeks to come. Some of the items the chief spoke to uh, on the substation curfews and a gun buyback program, while there's a positive side, we also want to make sure you understand the other side or issues that we might face and you'll hear more from the chief uh, through the end of September and then we'll be able to talk more about that I think in early October with the community. 
we would certainly ask anyone to call if they see something going on that's of concern to them and they feel like police need to be there to please call 911 please call them and we'll that will get our patrol officers in the area but also if they just have information that we're missing it's not an emergency but it's something they want to share if they begin with us by calling our records department there's somebody staffed there from 8 in the morning to 11 at night most weekdays and it's always a machine there that would take a message so as long as it's not a, a current emergency we would ask them to call 580-4257 again 580-4257 it is staffed most hours of the day again from 8 o'clock to 11 p.m. Monday through Friday and then if they leave a message with that information we'll make sure the proper officer or detective follows up with them the next day but uh, community helping us will certainly help in those efforts as well so more to come but a short update for you tonight my second item this evening is a reminder um, of maybe a new venture or a newer venture at the Paramount that we are showing True Grit tomorrow night, Tuesday, August 21st at 7 o'clock at the Paramount. This is the 1969 version of the movie with John Wayne. The cost is $5 for adults, uh, children under 12 no <coughs> charge. So if you're able to, to make that, it should be a different use of our theater and something we'll see if we can build on as part of a, just an effort to include more people in the community. So with that, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney? No report, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Allen? Uh, no report, Mayor. G? No, no report. Charles? Yeah, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> uh, I just wanted to uh, make reference to an icon that we lost a few uh, days ago in our community. Um, um, Robert Bob Swenson. Mm. Um, I remember when I was a boy, his voice just resonated uh, across Goldsboro, and he was well known throughout, uh, I would say, this region. And he was able to bring in gospel singing groups, mm. and he did that periodically in the community. And, you know, he's going to be greatly missed, and I just wanted to mention. This great icon and radio. Yeah. Uh, this jockey. Yeah, maybe well. This well. That it? Blue? No report. No report, sir. Michael. Just wanted to welcome back our mayor pro tem. Sure. You're now official. <laughs> so you're with thank us you. now. Okay, thank you. And one other thing, Mr. Mayor, I just want to say I mentioned it to you and Scott before. I had the opportunity to read a proclamation at the Purple Heart event at Walnut Creek. That was quite an event, and it was a very moving event. Uh, I was just so happy that I didn't mess up the proclamation <laughs> when I read it. But it, it was, I did not know we had so many Purple Heart individuals here in Wayne County. Uh, it, it was a very, very moving experience, and I was just so thankful and honored to be in their presence. Thank you for doing that. Sure. I worked with them uh, on many of the meetings, and we had, I think, about 40. Yes. About 40 Purple Heart recipients, and we have more. We do. We do and more. I think uh, that is being considered to be an annual event. It is. It I was understand announced. it grows and yes. grows. And, yes. You know, I signed all of the uh, uh, letters of proclaiming them for each individual. And a number of these veterans I knew personally, but I did not know that they had earned a Purple Heart. So it was an interesting and important for me to see people that I know, but I did not know that they had earned a Purple Heart. Uh, I attended the Goldsboro Worship Center, Back to School Bash Saturday. It's out on New Hope Road, and they did a heck of a job uh, providing school supplies for the kids, entertainment, to include haircuts. It was a huge, huge event, and I'm so glad, of, and I want to thank uh, the leaders, of the pastor and leaders of uh, the church for doing a fantastic job. And I want to thank our own golf crew, our staff, the pro and everyone associated with it for having a reopening and rededication of our newly constructed greens took a while, but set Friday afternoon they had a shotgun start. All only members of the club were invited to play, and we had a ball. It was a beautiful day. 
the course is in great shape. The Greens got them a tour. But I played with a couple of young people and their dad that just absolutely hit a ball on us. A 14-year-old could drive the ball over 300 yards. And his sister, who is 17, and weigh about 90 pounds, I guess, and about five feet, she could hit it almost as far as he could. But these young people are state champions. She is the state champion, single champion, <coughs> high school. He and his brother, who wasn't there, are state champions because their team, their high school team, won the state champion. So, uh, man, it was, I like young people, and I'll tell you, I had a ball watching them hit the ball. I wish I could do that. <laughs> uh, I think that's anything else to come before us. If not, we'll stand adjourned.